For more debates, updates, and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. The bitter pill for those of us with a scientific materialist perspective is that there's a little bit of faith required to do science as well, and that manifests. Um, what do you mean by that? What, what, where's because for many people, that'll be a, an oxymoron, yeah. a contradiction in terms. Surely there's no faith involved in a project like science. It's funny how often a scientist will tell me that they actually do their work with zero faith, but <laughs> not possible. Because how do you know, for example, that you are not a stark raving mad and that this room is not a fiction created by some part of your brain? Uh, right? If that were true, if the universe was something you couldn't observe because you were either comatose and this was some sort of a dream state or you were the object of some sort of experiment where somebody was piping perceptual information into your jar in order to figure out what you would think in response, then you can't do science because the only thing you have to perceive is what's being piped into your jar, right? So in order to do science, you have to make the assumption, I am real, this is real, I can run experiments on it, I can evaluate what I see, and uh, you know, you can either choose. Are you gonna resist any faith at all and spend your entire life on the question, how do I know I exist? <laughs> or are you gonna accept Descartes' uh, <laughs> bogus proof, I would argue, and say, well, I'm gonna assume that I exist. And having assumed that I exist, I'm gonna go on and do useful work. And if it turns out I don't exist or I'm not where I think I am, then no harm, no foul, right? So there is faith there, there has to be. And really the, the objective, I would argue, for for us scientific materialists, is to minimize the amount of faith, which sometimes is quite great. If you have a, a model of the atom that's very crude, an early model of the atom, then there's a lot of kind of interstitial stuff that isn't quite right, but is good enough to ask the next question. Eventually, you get to you know a periodic table that's highly predictive of what happens when you t put two atoms together in certain conditions, and so the amount of faith and the amount of mer metaphorical uh, belief that's in there is very small relative to what I would call factual information, but it never gets to zero. Again, where, where would you take this, Alistair? Well, I, I, this is very, very interesting. Let, let me just go back one step. I mean, I mean you, you, this point about faith in science, that's so good. Because, I mean, you've mentioned some people, Max Planck, for example, you know, has this very famous quotation that uh, the portals of the temple of science have, you must have faith written all over them, because you have to have. I mean, when you're, when you're trying to assess whether it's theory A or theory B, I mean, very often it's trying to adjudicate which is the better you know, of two possible theories. I think that is very important. I mean, I, I dislike Richard Dawkins' portrayal of science as, you know, absolutely robust and mm. so on, because at times it is very provisional and tentative, and you have to say, well, it could be this, it could be this, I'm going to choose that one, but I'm not absolutely sure, but I'm not doing something that's wrong either, because I'm saying, I think on balance this is right, but, you know, I, I can't prove that's the right. And that's why I, I think your, your bitter pill, which I like, I like that phrase a lot. I mean, for me, I think one of the bitter pills all of us have to swallow is this. That actually, as human beings, we have to learn to live with the fact that whatever our most cherished beliefs are, they're going to lie beyond proof. <laughs>